Welcome back everyone. So before doing anything more in this series, what I wanted to do is actually something very cool and that is to integrate the DRM GUI library. This is a very, very well known immediate mode um, GUI library that uh, is very useful for any kind of debugging or well editors or whatnot. And if we proceed with more advanced stuff like lighting that would require playing with some numbers and parameters that would be very very handy so now how do we actually use it well the library itself is a C++ library and fortunately it already supports backends uh, for a lot of stuff including uh, the ones that we are using which is SDL3 and SDL GPU 3 specifically so this is something that is supported by the MGUI itself and by MGUI, I am, of course mean dear MGUI because like there's a lot of different MGUI libraries. And then for Odin, uh, there is this library by L4 uh, who maintains this binding for, well, MGUI Odin. And it's really cool. It works pretty well. But the problem is that the main branch currently doesn't really support the SDL2. And L4 doesn't seem to have very much time uh, to work on this right now. So I took uh, some time and actually implemented some basic support for SDL GPU and it seems to work. And it is here in my repo. Uh, so I have a fork with this branch SDL GPU 3. So this is what I propose you to currently check out. Maybe when you watch this video, the L4 official binding branch is already updated but for now you can just use mine and how do you do that well if you go to the Odin installation right there's a shared collection where you can put some stuff and you can just clone the library like this so git clone then my fork not l4 fork but mine and then this branch and then just you put it into imgui library so if we do that we should be able to use that now. So let's try to import it. So import with some short name like I am, which is pretty useful when you want to create a lot of UI elements. And then shared, which is where we did clone the repo. You could also place it into your project or anywhere else that doesn't really matter. But I tend to put uh, common libraries like that into shared. And then here's the MGUI that we just cloned, right? So there's this one. Let's see if that compiles. Yeah, it does. But we don't use it, of course. And we need to import uh, two more packages from this uh, library. So uh, there is this IM SDL. So just for SDL itself, uh, this is needed for processing input events and whatnot that is really render agnostic so because SDL have of course 2D render and uh, you can use SDL with your custom render you can use like Vulkan or Metal or whatever directly uh, but SDL will still handle like mouse motions and keyboard input for you so SDL3 module uh, works with that and the second one is for SDL GPU specifically so SDL GPU right and then uh, it's also here the bindings. So now how do we use that? Well, the easiest option to actually get uh, an idea how to use that is take a look at the official C++ example here. So if we search for in GUI here, we see that uh, there is like this normal C++ SDL initialization and then some in GUI stuff. So this is what we're gonna basically re-implement in Odin. So yeah, let's move this window out of the way and I will just implement it by looking at it, uh, at it at the second monitor. So here at the end of the initialization, we can of course say something like init in GUI and then we can just easily create this procedure And then the first thing that we do is this check version macro exactly like in the C++ it's not strictly needed but uh, why not then we need to create an imgui context so im create context this one you can just pass default variables here and then what you need to do is first call im sdl 
And here you have a bunch of initialization options. And the one that we need is we need for SDL GPU, this one. And this one requires a window that we of course have. So SDL GPU window, right? And after that, you need to actually initialize the IM SDL GPU module like this. And that would be init, just the init. And that takes a pointer to a structure. In the structure, the most important stuff here, I mean, we can go maybe into its definition. It needs a device and the color target format, which you're supposed to get uh, with a swap chain texture format. If you are, of course, rendering to the swap chain, which we, are, we will gonna do. So the device is, of course, our GPU. And the color target format, again, I don't know why I don't have completion for that, is uh, our SDL get swap chain texture format for GPU and this window. So this is supposed to initialize the imgui. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does. No warnings, nothing, everything's good. The second part is in the rendering loop or in the main loop rather. So here, if we take a look, uh, when we are pulling the event, we let the MGUI SDL3 process the event, and this is what will handle all the mouse move and keyboard input and whatnot. So there's one thing that we are gonna do. Then after processing the events, we need to call this new frame functions. And normally we would need to call it for the main MGUI, but since we are also using this backends, the backends also need to do something uh, on the beginning on the frame. So we call also SDL3 new frame and SDL GPU new frame. So let's do that. Let's go to the main. So basically here, when we process the event, we should say something like I am SDL process event and then just pass the pointer to it, right? So this would be one part. And then before doing any updates, we should do, of course, in GUI SDL GPU. Probably the order is important here, so let's do that uh, exactly as they do in C++. So SDL GPU, then SDL new frame, then just IM new frame. So that will initialize per frame stuff in Google. And then if we want to test this, the easiest thing to do is basically just call the a special function called show demo window here and that will render a huge huge window with with a lot of UI elements that we can test if everything is working. So here in the update before the rendering we can call imgui API to show all kinds of UIs and for the rendering how it works is basically after you are done with using the UI you call the imgui render and then you get the draw data which is basically all the data uh, for the rendering that is prepared in uh, like vertices and indices and whatnot. Yes, so basically we say im render when we get the draw data, so im draw data or something, im get draw data. And now for rendering with SDL GPU, what we need to do is have a separate render pass and we need to prepare the data first. This is very important. It needs to be done so it can upload the buffers and whatnot. And then we create a separate render pass on top of our previous render pass where we render the whole game. And here we just call this render draw data. So let's do exactly that. After our normal render pass, we need to prepare the render data. So we can say im is the LGPU prepare render data, right? And that needs a command buffer that we're using. That would be our CMD buff. Then we need to begin a new render pass. So we need a new color target that actually doesn't clear the swap chain texture, right? So it should just load whatever it is there because we had the, we have our previous render pass. So let's say im color target and that should be uh, a new SDL GPU color target info, right? So the texture is the same. That would be our swap chain texture because this is what we are rendering to. The load operation here should be just load because we don't want to clear it. 
and the store operation is of course the same store. So that should be enough to create a new render pass. So let's say render pass still begin GPU render pass, the normal one. We pass the command buffer, we pass the pointer to the color target, number of targets one, and we don't even need the depth target information for that because this is just some 2D images. And finally, we of course uh, need to end the render pass, don't forget, very important. And within the render pass, we simply call IM SDL GPU render draw data. So we pass the draw data that we get before, pass the command buffer, pass the render pass, and that should be it. So now let's just try to run this. And voila, here it is. Although the issue is that we cannot really move the mouse here and cannot really properly use this interface. Uh, because what we do here, if you remember, in the initialization function, currently we set the relative mouse mode to true, which basically confines the cursor within the window and hides it. So let's disable this for now, run the game, and now we can actually check some stuff here. Seems to be working. And there's a lot of stuff here, it's really, really rich library, it's really cool and it's very useful. So how it is useful? How can we check that it works for us? Let's quickly do that. So if you remember, we have this thing called clear color, right? And what we could do is, for example, change that into variable and then make this modifiable via imgui inspector, right? So let's do that. Let's move this outside of the loop as a variable that we can change. So clear color, that would be SDL F color, so float color, right? And then we just paste whatever we had here, go back and change that to use the clear color variable. And now, if we remove this demo window and use some actual API for the imgui, like imgui begin, if im begin, and that would be something like inspector or something. And if we do begin, we don't need to forget to im end because this is how it works. And here is a lot of cool widgets that we can use, that we can draw. And because we want to change the color, there is a UI element called color edit. And we want to just edit three RGB, right? So this is what we're gonna use. That takes a label, so something like clear color. And then it takes a pointer to the value that will be read by this element and also written if we change this. So this would be our clear color. I mean, clear color is F color, which is basically four floats, but the fourth float is just alpha, which we don't really care, it's always one. Right, so what we can do is just pass the pointer to it here, except that it will complain uh, because the pointers are kind of to a different data types, but we know that this is uh, fine because it contains at least three uh, RGB floats here, so we can just transmute it to what it wants. So pointer of three F32s, right? Now I have this small window we can maybe change it uh, to fit the content. We can set uh, widths and heights, that's totally configurable. And we can change the values like this, right? We can even show this color picker with um, different color spaces and whatnot. And uh, this is really, really cool. We could maybe do some other thing, like we could, for example, say, do we actually want to rotate or not? So rotate, that would be true by default, right? And then here down, we can say only do this if rotate, right? But then we can also say, okay, I am checkbox. And we say rotate, and then we just pass a pointer to our rotate Boolean. So that should actually also work. So you see it is rotating 
we disable it stops rotating very very cool very very nice so how do we handle this annoying mouse uh, hijacking well we could have two modes like ui input mode and like the game input mode or something right and this could actually be controlled uh, by this relative mouse mode variable right so let's bring this back go back to main and let's see so basically we want to say something like UI input mode that would be whether it's not uh, locked right whether it's not uh, window relative so still get window relative mouse mode for the window so if it's not relative so it's if it's not confined and hidden then it's UI input mode right and then we can say that we only process the IM GUI if we are in this mode like if UI input mode only then process this and then this once we can actually invert we can say that we are only handling the key down key up and mouse motions for the actual game if we are not in the ui mode right so if not ui input mode we just do this and the editor screws up my indentations because it thinks that the that the case should be indented with the switch, which I don't really like. I have to configure this later. Nevertheless, we say something like this. And now what we could do is, for example, switch this um, relative mouse mode or your input mode with a middle mouse button, which is mouse button two, I believe. So here we can add a new case like mouse button down right so here we say basically ui input mode should be inverted and then we simply say sdl set window relative mouse mode for this window to what is not ui input mode so if we are not in the ui input mode we want a relative mouse mode and yeah, that wants to be handled, but we don't care. So, and yeah, of course, this is only relevant if we are actually pressing the button that is number two, which would be the middle mouse button. And now, if we run the game, so currently we can run the game and then I press the middle mouse button and the game is not reacting to the widgets, but the UI is reacting. And I can do some changes here. I can press again, and now I'm already in the game. And that seems to be working just fine. So this is really cool. And this is very useful for any kind of experimentations that I'm gonna do later. So I like this, and I hope you like it as well. So stay tuned.